Star Wars The Acolyte can no longer be classified as entertainment, but just progressive propaganda. The power of the As their lead actress breaks it down in a rap song how much she despises Star Wars fans. So here's what their intro should have been. And yeah, that was kind of a funny parody version of the traditional Star Wars crawl, but where is the lie? As the active sabotage of the Star Wars franchise has to be on purpose at this point, as I'll cover how they hired activist saboteurs as their lead actresses. Well, I mean, white people crying actually was the goal. Uh, we <laughs> <laughs> Directors that only want to shoehorn in their bizarre fan fiction. And are you telling me with a straight face that C-3PO is straight? They're a couple. That's what I think. <laughs> and the cheap bootleg villains that look like Spirit Halloween Sith Lords if they could only afford the cheaper Chinese Sith suit. And I'm not saying we needed an Adonis Sith to be scared of him, but apparently the Acolyte spent over $180 million to make this, so when he looks that stupid, it's really hard to take anything he does seriously. That's why it's great we have the sponsor for today's video, Manscaped.com, the global men's lifestyle brand revolutionizing men's grooming. As I have the Manscaped Performance Package 5.0, it features the Lawn Mower 5.0 Ultra that's probably going to be your best friend all summer long, as it not only comes with their next-gen skin-safe blade, but it can be quickly swapped out with the foil blade with these dual trimmers on both sides. And with the enhanced dual temperature LED spotlight, it can give you the closest, safest shave, and even your hardest to reach crevices. As the best feature of the Lawn Mower 5.0 is that it's waterproof which is great for me especially as I've been using it to make sure my arms are always perfectly groomed so it doesn't cover up my art. And then I pair it with their body buffer to make sure that everything is fresh with their silicone scrubber. So to have your smoothest summer yet, head over to manscaped.com to get the Performance Package 5.0 Ultra. And when you use my promo code DECOY, you'll get 20% off and free international shipping plus two free gifts. And it's insane everything in the Acolyte, from the conception to the execution to the repeated insults of their fanbase, makes me think that destroying the franchise has to be on purpose. The same way I'm a Boston Celtics fan, so if I got the GM job for the Los Angeles Lakers, I'd be handing out max contracts to WNBA players, changing their jersey colors to a hard-to-look-at red and neon green monstrosity, and advertising how the Lakers are the most LGBT team in the league. Now replace the franchise Lakers with Star Wars. Wars, and that's exactly what they did with the Acolyte. As I'm sure there's certain Laker or Star Wars fans that are women with terrible taste in costumes and pray five times a day to the Church of Inclusion, and they're absolutely loving every single moment of the Acolyte. But that's such an insignificant percentage of the fan base that it's simply not worth satisfying them if it's gonna alienate the others that came for entertainment, not validation for the rest of their worldviews. So when Disney hired an actress that obviously has an issue with white people, they can't be surprised when she still does years later. You know that like that's how they effectively made white people really afraid during that movie, was that they <laughs> killed the dog. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I think it wasn't until I was older and I could really understand things infrastructurally that I got, oh right, Hollywood is a white institution. And that means that that representations within Hollywood are going to be extensions of white supremacy. And not just in Hollywood, but, you know, in music, in entertainment, and in media. And when called out for it, releases a rap song to counteract the people calling her out. We try to weaponize everything that we do. The desperation of the press is expressing nothing. But when the director is even worse than her lead... People have told me that it's the gayest Star Wars, and I frankly... You're offended? Into it. it. No, I... <laughs> So when media outlets slam the show's poor performance, or including the weirdest scenes ever, Nerd Roddick slammed them to the masses over their wokeness. 
But also, that it's just a bad show in general. And allegedly, Luber posted and retracted this criticism of him and the critical drinker. Some audience members have issues with the show's diversity and LGBTQ plus themes, and those should be dismissed. However, viewers should genuinely examine the legitimate criticisms the acolyte has received. Cultural critics like the critical drinker and nerd Roddick have dubbed the show lore breaking for its recent revelations, but their commentary isn't productive. Rather, it encourages bigotry and hatred over a show that's just getting started. And notice how they never try to silence the criticism with objective or even subjective opinions as to why they're wrong. It's always, I'm labeling you these mean scary words, and unless you want my viewers to see you as a bigot, you have to stop bringing up those valid points, because the soft bigotry of low expectations tells us we can't criticize a female director and a POC cast the same way that we would do anybody else. As Inverse says the acolyte isn't ruining Star Wars, you are. Forbes writes how their 15% score is embarrassing for the audience. With the Lucasfilm head saying it's because the male-dominated fanbase doesn't like female leads. As right now, the Acolyte has fallen to a historically low 13% audience score. But interestingly, the House of Dragon, with their two female leads, in a show actually about women fighting the patriarchy, is sitting at 86%. And even other Star Wars films like Rogue One, their female lead got them an 87%, higher than even their critics. And it's sad how shallow their deflection of, I hired a minority so you have to like it, becomes, when time and time again people prove they don't care about the inclusivity of their favorite things. I like the LA Rams, despite them never having an Asian quarterback. And honestly, if they ever DEI a subpar position player for the sake of inclusion, it would only set my race back if they got sacked every play until they actually die of DEI. And even though this sounds absurd, companies ending themselves over equity has now become a common theme, as Bud Light was the first to light their legacy on fire, with Sports Illustrated's swimsuit magazine following suit, and now Sony had decided to add pronouns to their online game. And I'm telling you right now, from personal experience, anonymous online gamers are the absolute last people that demand political correctness, as I played a lot of Xbox Live in the Modern Warfare 2 era, and I can't tell you exactly why, but if you can't see my face and only hear my voice, a lot of people assume that I'm black. I don't know why, but I'd constantly be called the hard R, and not in the weird gamer way they call everybody that. No. I would hear it in detail how much they didn't like my perceived race that they definitely weren't guessing Asian of all things. But it just goes to show how these corporations run by college grads from liberal arts universities fundamentally don't understand their target audiences. As when Star Wars fans see scenes like this, with an open campfire occurring in the vacuum of space, they're gonna get upset. Now, other so-called fans say, but fires in space is something that Star Wars has always done. Now, I could go into the science of how gases exploding out of a spaceship isn't quite the same as a campfire in space, but honestly, I'm too stupid. The point being, is if you have to argue why something is fun, it's probably not fun. As they're out there shoehorning in how Star Wars was always woke because they used the word there to describe an organization or going on specifically Asian Reddit boards to get mad that white nerds don't like the Acolyte, despite not seeing the show themselves. And first and foremost, I've always been against the whole self-segregation that certain races insist on. The whole idea that this Redditor wants talking points as to why they like the Acolyte, not because they're enjoying it, but to prove white people wrong, perfectly encapsulates how these groups take the people on the fringes of not quite fitting in, and the full-blown weirdo outcasts that practically beg for their NPC programming. As I recently saw this subreddit called YouTube Drama that basically pins whoever they're currently canceling, where someone asked about Shoe on Head, finding out that she's actually not the pure liberal they thought she was, but then asked, who else should I stop watching? Please don't let me make the mistake of enjoying something that I'm not allowed to. And that's the difference between normal people and the modern day progressive left. I personally don't care if you love Star Wars. I even enjoyed the third movie of the sequel trilogy. It was just mindless fun that looked cool. And I'm sure a lot of you guys watching this didn't, and even despise Disney overall, but don't need me to pass a purity test of always agreeing and validating your opinions so you can enjoy the rest of my channel. You might think I'm simple-minded for liking Star Wars, the Fast and Furious, or Basketball, but inversely, I'm never gonna lose my mind if you don't enjoy what I do. Oh, you don't like the Fast and Furious X2? What, you don't like family? Are you a bigot? My life is so tied to the thing that validates my life choices that an attack on it is now an attack on me. 
It makes me think, whatever happened to having personal conviction? Why can't you just be or do something without having it completely hijack your entire identity up to including your job? Because the acolyte being plagued by wokeness is just the most popular example recently. But daytime television is apparently worse. What am I having? Are you sure? <laughs> yeah. It's a boy! <laughs> And by worse, I mean terminally ill. Racism. I think your son's tumor was caused by racism. So as Get Woke Go Broke goes from being a cautionary tale to their official corporate mission statement, it actually presents this once in a lifetime opportunity for the next generation. I think of how the John Wick films are just mindless fun, but it wouldn't be must-see cinema if it wasn't the sole movie that didn't shove woke nonsense down your esophagus. So the bigger the box office busts become, the more likely one studio will break free from all the progressive nonsense and finally put profitability over pandering. So if you appreciate my concise, lighthearted commentary on the tragic status that is today's reality, hopefully I've earned your subscription, then go check out the video on the last time Disney had to put their so-called stars back in their place.